piece is long, and we artists may seem simple to some, because we are always seeing this piece in justice. But I am sure that the fact that the artists take up a position of solidarity helps to change things. Who's joining me in the studio now? Hello, everyone. As we get the next part of the program underway, which regular listeners will know is devoted to comments, questions, and requests sent in by listeners, we'd like to welcome a few newcomers to RBI. First of all, M. A. Bailey in Barnsley, South Yorkshire, and A. Barnes in Shepton Mallet, Somerset, both in England, have asked for our program schedule and will be sending you a copy of RBI information which contains full details of our broadcasting times and frequencies as soon as we can. G. N. Karaiskos in Athens, Greece, and Krista Runison in Gothenburg, Sweden, would like a copy too. We'll be getting in touch with you both soon. Another newcomer, Ian Morrison, age 13, who lives in Kilwinning, Ayrshire, Scotland, also wants our program schedule, and in addition writes, Could you please also send me some of the postage stamps and first day covers of the GDR? I'm a keen philatelist. In that case, Ian, perhaps you'd like to tune in to our special program for philatelist stamp album, which is on the air every other Tuesday, the next one being on the 3rd of March. We'll be sending you some first day covers, together with some literature about the GDR, which is all free of charge, just as soon as we can. Another newcomer, this time from Denmark, Henrik Nielsen in Glostrup, sent us a very nice letter, explaining that he usually writes the Danish section here at Radio Berlin International, but for a change has written to us here in the English section. His interests are many, ranging from the Practically, I didn't know Vapor's music until his 200th anniversary, which you at RBI marked. After this, I went to the local music library and borrowed a couple of Vapor records, which I like very much. We're glad to hear you managed to tune into our programs commemorating the Weber anniversary last year, Henrik. 
and we hope you like our next musical interlude. It's Invitation to the Dance by Zeba. to the dance in this program coming to you from Radio Berlin International, the voice of the German Democratic Republic. We stay with Henrik Nielsen from Denmark as we turn our attention now to the question of peace. Henrik writes, I share your concern of securing peace, though I really am a pessimist in this field. The USA, in its struggle against communism, wants to put economic pressure on the USSR and the socialist countries by intensifying the arms race. Though I'm not a communist, I do not think that this is reassuring. The only result will be an even greater danger of a nuclear catastrophe, and that would be of no interest either to the USA or to the USSR. No, it wouldn't. But you don't have to be a communist to find the arms race disturbing. Throughout the peace movement, people from all walks of life are fighting to end the arms race, not just communists. The Soviet Union and the other socialist countries have shown that it's possible to avert a nuclear disaster with their program for peace, with the proposals which were put on the table in Reykjavik, with the suggestions for nuclear-free zones and chemical weapon-free zones in Europe. A moratorium on nuclear testing, as observed by the Soviet Union for so long, is a vital step on the road to disarmament. Weapons already stockpiled need testing for viability, and you can't make new weapons without testing them. If you don't test, you don't make new weapons, and the ones already in existence become obsolete. Thus, a moratorium would mean a step towards nuclear disarmament, towards reducing the danger of a nuclear catastrophe, because the number of nuclear arms as such would be reduced. One last quote from your letter, Henry. I think it's possible to cooperate in spite of political differences, without interfering in the domestic policy of other countries. Yes, of course. This policy of peaceful coexistence has long been practiced by the socialist countries. To exist nowadays is to cooperate, and that means at all levels. Countries with differing social systems have to exist side by side and must do so to survive. Such a policy presupposes a sense of trust and provisions for building up that trust to mutual advantage 
do exist with meetings, for instance, in Geneva or Vienna, taking place between representatives of countries with differing social orders. It's a forward-looking policy for trust in matters cultural, social, political and military. And perhaps one day, it will be possible for other countries to join the Soviet Union in its quest for peace. For ridding the world of nuclear weapons, and as it was announced at the beginning of last week in Moscow, be willing to give up its status as a nuclear power. If any other listeners would like to comment on the point made, just like to the English section, Radio Berlin International, Berlin 1160, German Democratic Republic. <laughs>